In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to convince you that whatever Gen AI initiative that you do in your company actually deserves a platform team. Now, whenever there's a new technology, now AI in the past, cloud, internet, mobile, there's always been that change, that one team that incubates the change. Then it is trying to be reproduced in a few teams and you learn from each other and eventually you scale this up to different teams. Now, here we also see the typical friction. When something moves in the organization, uh, there is friction. And the data science, they've done really well at dealing with AI, but they were a little bit on their own kind of platform. And then the engineering also had their own software and production platform. That kind of friction and operating that friction, um, the change agent right now is called the AI engineer. And you will see that actually part of the data science is moving towards production, almost like shifting right. And they're the incubator that brings these kind of things to production. Now, it's a typical thing when we apply the platform pattern, it is about collaboration across those teams and also enablement on those teams. So the way that I usually frame this is like whenever you get that change, you have a platform, the platform team does also enablement on that platform, and they also do the governance on that platform. Now, who am I? I am mostly known for being the author of the DevOps Handbook. Um, I try to be an industry uh, neutral advisor, and I'm now very focused with software engineering with AI and kind of also delivering products with AI. I'm also the curator at AI Native Dev, where I write about these things. All right, so the first piece is your platform. So what goes into that platform? Um, well, obviously a model, large language model. It could be a SaaS offering that you're providing. It could be running your own open source models. It could be somewhere hybrid, a combination of both. That's the first piece you usually come into contact as the infrastructure of that new platform team. Then you'll see that many of the information within your company is unstructured data, and you want to index that information. And they'll be asking for a vector base, database, which is similar to a search engine, but semantic search engine. Now in the past, many had like very specific solutions for this. I think right now, every database vendor actually has a vector database service into this. So that becomes part of your stack as well. So we have the documentation, they get it indexed and they get it included into your um, LLM uh, request there as well. So this brings up like RAG as a service. So you become like managing all those integrations with third-party systems, with third-party data sources. It's almost like a RAG ops thing that is emerging in there. Now, that's the simplistic thing. Um, you can do a lot more with this. And then when you really want to like raise the bar, you go into agents as a service, and that's also a new piece of infrastructure that you have to deal with. Like it has memory, it has some state, uh, keeps track of things. There's access control that you need to manage. So that's something that also quite naturally belongs into a platform team as well. Now, the more agents are being using third-party services, uh, those services can be exposed as MCP servers. And so similar to an API catalog, you'll see MCP catalog uh, uh, kind of emerging and it's almost like create that feasibility uh, inside of your organization there as well. And as code is being executed, um, and part of that long running thing, not just a Lambda or a serverless function, uh, you'll have to have execution sandboxes for those agents to um, execute what they need. So it's another piece you'll add to the mix. Now, this is a, a piece that is proxying all the in and output from models um, providers, and it gives you a way to control cost, uh, access control, uh, different versions of models, who gets access to what. So it's definitely a piece uh, in an enterprise that you'll be looking into uh, to control, control um, that in uh, kind of in and out. Now, you also want to look into caching because sometimes the, the kind of providers are still expensive. Um, and providing a central caching layer is quite useful uh, there as well to make it almost transparent for the developers to use. Now, so far, we've kind of talked about pieces that are useful for 
delivering the service. Uh, this is a, a providing a, a solution for developers to trace and to find where the prompts cause uh, issues. Uh, it's almost like API tracing, but prompt tracing, and you see one call to the LLM causes a next, a next call. And so that debugging requires its own tooling uh, in there. There's many tools that exist right now in that space. And if you start like monitoring the in and outputs, you can also check for things like toxicity and the data quality of that input and output um, going into the models as well. And then finally, maybe uh, it's a piece that usually comes up a little bit later, but it's quite useful, is feedback as a service. And that captures the end user feedback in a centralized way. And why is that useful? Because once you start doing more training and more testing, that gives you the test cases that you want from the end users that you're targeting to make better uh, at. So you see that simple LLM kind of exploded into a multitude of services and it's becoming increasingly more complex and entangled. So that's going to be your job is to make sure that this platform and all the pieces underneath it kind of keep on running. Now, it is kind of getting very broad, much like our CNCF landscape and Kubernetes. It is an ever expanding tool set that you need to monitor. And that's why it has merit to do this in its own group. We've built about, talked about the platform, what you can provide, but how do you enable customers on top of that platform? First thing is usually you provide like a prototyping, a sandboxing environment that they can play with the new tools and they can test this. Once they get more familiar with this, they could start like coding and then you pick kind of like a standardized framework that matches your environment or your existing languages uh, in your company. Um, and that's offering um, a standard, but it also comes with its own ecosystem for caching, for testing, for debugging there as well. So that leads eventually to more goal on pads. Here it's just a simple prompt, but it could be whole chain and kind of components. It could be connectors that are reusable. So that's kind of part of your enablement is to build that catalog of two reusable components in there. Now, where most kind of developers actually struggle with is the testing. And it's easy to do the testing in a way that I ask an LLM and I can just check uh, an arbitrary uh, value, like what's the length of the characters, something that is exact. Or I can use a regex, whether a certain word exists in the output. But what about sentiments or the quality, or is it toxic? That's hard to capture in an exact test. So that uses either helper AI models or related models in there. And one of the other things that is very common right now is how do you kind of ask and see whether the output of one LLM is good? Actually, you use another LLM to do this. This is LLM as a judge. And then ultimately, as a human, you can still do the overview, but this is costly. So likely you're gravitating somewhere between a model and an LLM. And if you can do it fast, then it's going to be exact testing. But that's kind of like a struggle in there. So the next thing they struggle with is they might say like AI is nothing for us and we don't know and we're scared about this. Uh, so you'll also have to overcome this. And there's no better way than kind of have developers use more AI inside of their job. So they get like familiar with this and they kind of get also um, a feeling of what it means to work with AI. Uh, we'll see that also the, the role of the developer will be changing. The coding times might go down and the number of code being produced goes up, but the review times go up as well. So there's a shift of that role of a developer that you need to be aware of while you're enabling developers to use more AI inside of your product. I've written about this. Uh, I call it the four AI native dev patterns. Um, right now we've discussed from producer to manager where the developer is not just producing the code, but they're managing maybe the agents, the code agents. But there's also other shifts from moving to implementation to intent, where you express the intent and the AI is actually doing the implementation. Or you can do more discovery similar to vibe coding and kind of find more things. So that is something that is useful to be aware of when you're doing this enablement uh, to your developers. Now, we're not there yet. If you look at like AI and Gen AI as automation, we're somewhere in between infrastructure as code and getting better at testing CI CD. 
in our journey. We still have a long way to learn about monitoring and designing for failure because hallucinations and we know that Gen AI is prone to errors. Um, so observability, deal with the unknowns is definitely useful. And then kind of keep training because if the more and more AI is doing things, we'll still have to learn how things are being done. Similar to the landscape of the infrastructure, the whole enablement and the tooling landscape is exploding. Um, I curated roughly around 300 tools in that space. So have a look at it if you're looking for inspiration. Final piece is we got the platform, we did the enablement, and then I usually want to run the governance on top of that as well. So one thing of the governance is you want to make it safe uh, for not just the users, but also the whole kind of organization. So you train them and saying like, make sure you opt out of any AI training. You make them aware of this. And it's not always that easy uh, because they're very kind of gullible uh, at the way to, to try this. Uh, but it's definitely something you need to do to protect whatever is going on in your company um, as data as well. Then you look at uh, whatever model that you're using, similar to a software bill of material, you look at whatever the model is providing because it's yet another dependency in your stack that you need to assess. And then finally, there's a lot more um, legislation that will be happening. So you have to train them and understand and keep a catalog of whatever application they're doing and have them understand the risk levels. You can do some threat modeling in there as well to kind of make sure um, that that, um, kind of gets under control. Now, the system on itself, we know prompt injection is still an unsolved problem, but software vendors are working on this, but you have to be aware that there's no perfect way to handle uh, prompt injection yet. There's a little bit of a guardrails. Yes, we can check for certain words and toxicity, similar to what we did with the testing. So that's useful um, for people to set up as a first level. So it's almost like a web application firewall, but it checks the inputs and outputs of your application to see if nothing is unusual un or uh, unwanted. And then you can keep track also on PI and certain other leaks and security metrics in there. So I hope I gave you kind of a brief overview of how you bring um, AI into your uh, organization, what the platform entails, what the enablement does, and what the governance could uh, be doing. Now, as a bonus, I want to say that there's also another model, not just the team topologies platform, but the unfix models also talks about certain crews and things helping um, and kind of streamlining this because platforms actually exist at multiple places in an organization, not just at the technology stack, but on the platform could be also in the product stack or in other kind of pieces. So they talk about um, a, a crew and a platform crew that helps that, but there's also kind of an experience crew that uh, kind of uh, aligns all the experiences within the product. And so roughly you'll get something like this. Uh, in previous company, we had like a cloud ops, sec ops, developer experience data platform. And we kind of started adding an AI platform in the technology in the platform layer. And then on top of that, in the product layer, there was the AI experience layer. So I hope this gave you a good overview uh, of whatever goes into the stack. Um, let me know in the comments whether you agree, whether this is something uh, as a journey you're on. And um, I hope to see more uh, enablement and stories come out uh, around this platform. Thank you very much. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and um, good luck. <laughs>